guys and welcome back to Leslie through the looking glass for those of you that are new here hi my name is Leslie I'm so happy to have you for my returning viewers as always thank you so much for coming back and continuing to support my channel um, all right guys today we are back with another mental health Monday um, first before I even get into anything new I just want to thank everybody so much for watching my last video for sharing your stories with me, for commenting and messaging me support. Um, I was overwhelmed by the response. Um, it really means so much to me that I had so many people reaching out to share their stories that some people like their families weren't even super um, aware of what they had gone through in the past with losses and stuff like that. And it's just so heartbreaking to me that so many of us know this feeling and go through the struggle and feel so alone while we're doing it. So I really hope that maybe by sharing these things with you guys, it's taking the first step to normalizing a different kind of scenario where we can support each other and we share what we're going through with other women because nobody should go through this. It's unfair, it's awful, but definitely nobody should have to go through it alone or without their like tribe gathering around them and supporting them. Um, so that's first, I, I was blown away by the support and feedback. Um, that being said, I did have some questions, um, that I'm going to attempt to answer or at least throw out there. So maybe other people will have ideas or things they went through, um, and can comment, um, and then just kind of elaborate on what this whole series of events did to like my anxiety and my mental health. Um, so this is kind of like part two of my recent story. Um, so I got to a pretty rough place. Um, the first week that everything was happening, I was very overwhelmed with emotion. Of course, right? Like that's not a surprise you, anybody would be. Um, but with that, it was really, really, really hard for me to stay focused on facts and not get to a dark place of tearing myself down further. Um, I had a very hard time not blaming myself, which also I feel like is pretty common and pretty normal and what almost all of us who go through this at some point or another always question what we did wrong, what we could have done different, stuff like that. Um, and again, I think anybody going through this is probably familiar with those feelings. Um, the difference is with that, it greatly triggered my anxiety. Um, and it, the only example I can kind of give to explain like how my anxiety made me want to like lock my family in a fortress and not let anybody else get hurt. That was like where my headspace went. Um, and an example I can give you is we were talking about buying some outdoor um, stuff for our daughter um, since we got a stimulus check. For her um, we kind of wanted to put that into our yard and making it more enjoyable for her this summer especially when um, you know we might we're working and our moms are here they have some outdoor equipment to play with and my husband's talking about a trampoline because she loves our neighbor's tramp she wants to go on it all the time I could not even grasp the concept of allowing that in my yard I was like, it's way too dangerous. She's gonna break an arm or worse. Uh, no, I don't want this. Like, no, 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 no. I can't keep this tiny thing inside of me safe. I can't keep my child safe on a trampoline. Absolutely not. Um, and that's kind of where my anxiety started spiraling and I stopped being able to grab the facts. Um, and it's not even that I knew the facts. I just couldn't get my brain to be okay accepting them. Um, the facts are this happens to so many of us. The facts are it's never anything any of us are doing wrong. It's just not a viable um, pregnancy. It, there's something in the way stuff matches up that just makes it not something that can be carried. Um, and I know this, I have enough medical background. I've been through it before. I've heard all the things like I know that. I know there's not one single thing I could have done differently, but in those first two weeks, man, it was impossible. I could not, I could not believe that that was a true fact. I knew it was facts, but my brain could not accept it. Um, and you know, I had headaches every day again. Um, and 
And on top of the emotional, you're also going through all the physical things that go along with the miscarriage. Um, I was lucky my body did everything on its own. I did not have to go into any procedures. Um, but if you do from what they explained to me, um, because that was a question that I was asked was, did I have to go in and get a DNC? And if so, how was it? I did not. Um, I, my body did what it was supposed to do on its own as far as that. Um, but I do know a few friends who unfortunately have had that and luckily it is minor and there was not really much um, difference. It doesn't sound like physically going through either one. Um, but I do think that it helped my anxiety not to have to go in and do that. I did however have to go back three times for blood to make sure my body was doing what it was supposed to be doing. Um, and then the other question, which is what this whole video kind of revolves around, um, is like, what did I do to control my anxiety the best I could during this? And was it successful? So I will tell you the first two weeks, it was not successful, which is part of why this video took so long for me to share it with you guys. Um, it was always on my agenda to share it with you. I thought it was really important to be shared. Um, but I needed to have two things happen for me to be able to do that. And one was I needed not to be able to cry the entire time I was filming and two I needed to have my anxiety in an okay place so that talking about it didn't bring up those memories um, so basically all I did was survive for the first week um, the second week I at least attempted to have a routine I attempted to um, tell myself all the facts that I knew were actually true um, even if I wasn't to the place where I could believe them yet um, but I knew the sooner I could start doing that the sooner I would believe it um, and you guys I don't want it to make like I don't want it to sound like I have it all figured out I still cry <laughs> multiple days a week um, it's really hard I'm happy for other people I know a lot of people right now who are also pregnant um, and I'm so happy for them, but it's also so hard to watch still because it's such a raw feeling. Um, and there's just so many emotions that go along with it and it takes time to heal just like any loss or trauma. Um, and I'm still working through it, but I hope that by at least sharing my journey, somebody is going to, you know, say, oh, me too. I'm not the only one. Or, you know, oh, I haven't tried that. Maybe that'll help me. You know, that's all I just want to do by sharing all of this with you guys. Um, and maybe bring some awareness if this isn't something you've gone through, um, how to be a little bit more sensitive if somebody you know is going through it or more positive in their life for them while they're going through it. Um, so I just feel like there's a lot of good that can come out of talking about it, especially going forward and hopefully, hopefully normalizing these conversations a little bit more frequently and not having them be such like a hidden topic. Like I said, the volume of people that reached out to me to share their stories, um, my heart broke for every single one of them. And I, why, I just can't, I keep coming back to why, why are we teaching society that this is how it is done? Um, so that being said, um, it does get a little bit better each day. Um, it's still there. It's still right under the surface. I just am doing a better job of controlling when those emotions come out um, but it is hard and people asking innocent questions can trigger that feeling in a heartbeat um, I was at some class with my daughter today and somebody was saying how good she was with the littler babies and does she have a sibling I could have cried right there in the pool I didn't I was able to hold it together but you know my my eyes welled up with tears because and it was a nice question she was being so sweet the babies I'm sure they were just wondering how she learned that behavior and what it was like and but they had no you know they don't know what I just went through so things like that can be really difficult um, asking people all the time what are you gonna have kids are you gonna have kids yet like that can be really hurtful to people um, because you don't know they could have been trying to have babies for years and not been able to so you asking them like oh when's your turn or what's next for you with the is a baby soon like it can be such a just basic conversational question but it could cause so much pain in somebody who is you know struggling 
Um, so I think we all just need to be a little bit more aware of that. Um, and just consider that going forward and just be really careful about how we phrase questions. And if somebody seems closed off about something, realize there could be much more going on behind the scenes than what you even know. Um, but yeah, so those are the main things. I've been working really hard um, on getting my shoulder healed so I can get back to more physical fitness because again, that really helps uh, my mental um, like capacity so much. It helps me clear my head, it helps me like focus better. Um, it just gives me a positive outlet. Um, talking about it has really helped me. I know for some people that is really hard, um, but sharing this information with you guys and talking about it and opening up about it um, has been really helpful to me. So if you are going through this or you have gone through this or you go through this in the future, really consider like once you're able to talk to somebody that you can count on to be there for you and share your grief so that it's not consuming you. Um, or go to a therapist, go to a counselor. Um, that was one of the other things that I did la before I filmed last week is I met with my therapist and kind of just got everything out and came up with a plan on what, what do I need to focus on to get through this. Um, but I think that is crucial. I don't think you can heal if you just push it down and act like it didn't happen or ignore it. Like you don't have to talk to your friends or family if that's not what you're comfortable with, but talk to a therapist, talk to a counselor, talk to somebody, get the tools you need to be better and move forward so that either you can, you know, move on and try again when the time comes and you're ready or decide that you don't want to do that any longer and feel confident going forward with that, but you have to be able to deal with that before you can move on in any way. Um, and that's really hard. And it's very hard to have all those feelings through your head and trying to make decisions. And so you just need to like take your time. Um, but I feel like this video is kind of all over the place, you guys. So I apologize. I feel like it's kind of rambling, but um, most of this is stuff that, like I said, I was trying to cover some of the stuff people asked, like, what did I do? How did I get back on track? Therapy, exercise, telling myself the facts um, all the time. Mantra. I use my mantra all the time. Um, it might seem silly to a lot of people, but I use a great big beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day. Um, it's from Disney, the carousel of progress. It's a song at the end, but to me, it's just a con like a Disney's my happy place. So of course I incorporate that into everything. And then B like, it's a good reminder, no matter how crappy this day is, this gloomy, awful day, it is going to be a new day tomorrow and it's what we make it. So tomorrow can be a brighter day. You just have to go into it thinking that way. Um, so I really, it's one of my mantras I've used since I started therapy and came up with one. Um, and you know, I remind myself of it every night before I go to bed. Um, I had it written on a note card for a while I had it in my purse. Um, you know, I just had to have that constant reminder. So those have been the biggest things that have gotten me to where I'm at now. Like I said, I am still a work in progress of healing from this. I by no means have it all figured out. These are just a few of the things that have worked for me um, that I figure no harm in sharing in case somebody else can use them to make their journey slightly easier. Um, and again, reaching out to somebody, um, talking to somebody, um, huge. I think therapy is such an underrated thing by so many people. It's kind of considered like, I don't know, I feel like people think there's like a negative stigma to it. Um, but I feel like so many people could benefit from therapy and just give you better tools to handle anything. Um, whether it be, you know, anxiety, depression, just getting through situations, um, just learning better tools to communicate or deal with problems in day to day life. Like there's just so much. I don't think you need to be going through some sort of trauma to benefit from therapy. I think if you are going through some sort of trauma, therapy is an important way to get through it though. But yeah, guys, so I think that's about all I have for today. Um, I probably will not like go super in depth with this specific conversation going forward unless people have other questions or 
there's some sort of reason to dive more into it. Um, just because I, at this point, don't think I have too much else to say on the topic. Um, as like focusing a whole video on it. Um, but I do appreciate the support and the thoughts and prayers and all of the people that reached out. You guys are amazing. This community is nothing short of amazing. Um, and I think I got back to every single person who DM'd me, uh, messaged on our Facebooks, um, commented on the video, reached out to me on Instagram. Like, I think I got back to everybody because it was so important for me to thank everybody and listen to their story and just be there. So if I missed anybody, I am truly so sorry. Um, I still have been trying to go back and scroll through all of those things to um, make sure I didn't miss anybody because um, this is important and I want to take the time to hear stories and respond back to everybody. Um, all right, guys, going forward, um, Saturday, I will be back with a Disney Bibbidi unboxing. Um, give you that video on Saturday. Next Monday, I'm not quite sure what the topic will be. Um, and then I think the week after that is my fairy godmother swap that I'm taking part of. So that's super exciting. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, please do. It is also Leslie through the looking glass um, with underscores in between each word. Um, I will put it down below in the description, but I'm going to have lots of cool things going on over there coming up. Um, I did just get picked up as a brand rep for Chelsea's character creations. I'm spotting sport in her mini headband bow band today and it's super cute. Um, so I will have some more products coming from her soon to share, um, which I will probably share on here as well. Um, but lots of cool stuff coming up guys. Um, so I hope if you're not already, you'll hit it subscribe down below and consider subscribing to my channel and if you turn on the bell notifications you'll be alerted every time I post new content. Um, tomorrow night I will be on Disney Connections for another um, Taco Tuesday where we'll be talking about Falcon and Winter Soldier. If you're into that all, at all find them. I'll link their Instagram down below as well or YouTube down below and they'll be live on their YouTube channel tomorrow night at 9 30 central. Um, and that's about it guys. I hope everybody has a great week. Let's like make it a good one. Um, and just remember there's a great big beautiful tomorrow and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.